Oh, I'm glad I came to church today. What about you? Amen. So glad I came into the house of God today, celebrating our graduates, celebrating our fathers, and we're about to partake in the blessed, sacred service of communion. And so today, we just want to just set that up. Amen. Can we just set up communion? You know, the truth is, communion doesn't really need a setup. Amen. I, I wish I had a witness on, on, on that. Amen. Communion really doesn't need a setup because if you would just think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, that'd be enough of a setup for you for communion. Amen. Um, uh, but, but, but since some of us need a little encouragement, I'm going to try to set it up today. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 13. Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 13. Amen. Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 13. Amen. I know you've already stu stood, but in honor of the word, when you have it, will you stand to your feet and shout, I've got it. Amen. If you're still looking, say, wait for me. We'll wait patiently. As we do wait, I just want to say to you that it is with a grateful heart that I stand before you today. The Lord was just impressing upon me a, a real heavy this week. I was just feeling this sense of gratitude that God didn't have to trust me. God didn't have to use me. God could have left me by the wayside. He could have left me to my own vices and my own decisions. But God chose in spite of myself to use me anyhow. And that thing's been sitting on me so heavy this week. I just am in the heart today, in the house today with the heart of gratitude. Just thankful that God didn't give up on me. Even when I wanted to give up on myself, God didn't give up on me. Amen. Anybody else have that testimony with me today? Yeah, I am grateful and full of gratitude today. Acts chapter 4, beginning with verse 8. The Bible says, Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then here's what we need you to know. You and all the people of Israel it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who you crucified but whom God raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is, hallelujah, the stone that the builders rejected which has now become the what? The cornerstone. Therefore, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Verse 13, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. I wonder if you would have just announced my title to the person sitting on your left or right. The promise graduates. The promise graduates. You may have your seats in the house of the Lord. We have prayed already and we will move forward with the word of the Lord. The promise graduates. I'm coming to the end of this series. We were in the 50 days to Pentecost and since that time we've been preaching on the promise of Pentecost. Amen. For the Pente Pentecost did not just show up as an isolated, un irrelevant event, but Pentecost came so that God might reveal his promise to his people. And so for the last several weeks, we've been talking about the promise that was delivered at Pentecost. And I wanted to end somewhere in some ways where I began to remind you of what the promise really is. And to encourage you and to challenge you to go after the promise. Say, I'm going to go after the promise. 
I'll take the two of you who said it, but I'm looking for a few more. I want you to say, I'm going after the promise. I'm going after the promise for it is what God has provided to me. And whatever God has for me, I want to make sure I get it. I wish I had a witness in the house of God today. Nothing that God has in store for me. No blessing, no gift, no, ble- no, no pro- pro- possibility, no opportunity. Do I want to miss out on that God has for me? So I thought I would end where I began and let you know that, that if you missed it, the promise, the promise that God has, to provi- has provided to us, it is a promise of power. Amen. I wish I had a witness in the house of God today that it is a promise of power. And I'm so glad that it is a promise of power because there is not much you can do in this life without power. Oh, I wish I had somebody who knows your car will not start without power. Amen. Your phone will not call without power. Lights in your house will not come on without power. The oven won't bake, hallelujah, without power. The dishwasher won't wash without power. The the dryer will not dry without what? power. The iron won't iron without power. The toaster won't toast without power. The TV will not televise without power. And, and, and in fact, some doors will not even open without without power. I, I could go on, but time will not permit me. Microwaves will not microwave without power. Trash compactors will not compact without power. Trains won't drive. Planes won't fly. Nothing can happen without power power and the point being listen to the preacher this morning the point being is that power helps you to do what you are otherwise unable to do yeah 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 power helps you to do what you are otherwise unable to do and that and that that is significant because the promise of the new testament was not simply that the holy spirit would fall but that when the holy spirit falls you will receive power I, amen and, and and you know for me that's that's both homiletically exciting and theologically significant see this is theologically significant because when i read my bible i see that there were some people who needed power do you read the same bible that i read and you examine the stories in the bible that everybody wasn't perfect in there hallelujah amen everybody didn't have it all figured out amen you think you're messing up but i can show you some stories in the bible that are far worse than anything you've ever done do i have a witness on that Amen. Far worse. You got to keep up with me because I only got 13 minutes left. It's a short message because we got communion. So I need you to stick with me and walk with me through this word. Amen. Amen. I don't have time to get it all set up nice and pretty. I just need you to go in. Say, I'm going in, pastor. Amen. I got a few people who will go in with me. I, I, I need you to know that, that, that I'm glad that the promise of the New Testament is, is, is given not only that the Holy Spirit would fall, but that when the Holy Spirit fell, it would bring power. Because when I look at the Bible, I see that there were some people who were in need of power. Abraham was waiting on the promise, but he didn't have enough power to resist Hagar. Moses was waiting on the promise, but he didn't have enough power to control his anger. Achan was waiting on the promise, but he didn't have enough power to keep his hands off the glitter and gold of Ai. Samson had physical power, but not enough power to keep his head out of the lap of Delilah. The woman of Zarephath was waiting on the promise, but she didn't have enough power because she didn't believe that her bread and water would be sure. David was waiting on the promise, but Lord Jesus, David didn't have enough power to stay away from Bathsheba. Solomon was waiting on the promise, uh, 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 but he didn't have enough power to, to, to see beyond the vanity of this world. Jeremiah was waiting on the promise, but Jeremiah didn't have enough power to stop crying. Jonah was waiting on the promise, but he didn't have enough power to overcome prejudice. Uh, 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 Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi were all waiting on the promise, but they didn't have enough power to bring it to pass. So I'm so glad that the New Testament is not only about being filled with the Holy Spirit, but it's about when the Spirit falls, he will provide power. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, Hebrews said. Hebrews said. Hebrews eleven says that uh, that says that many of the ones that I mentioned and more were commended for their faith, but none of them received the promise of what? 
power. None of them received it. Abraham was a good man. Moses was a good man. Joshua was a good man. We could go down the list. They were all good, good leaders. Uh, even Rahab, the prostitute, was a good woman. Hallelujah. She's in the genealogy of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Ruth was a good woman. Amen. A lot of these folks were good, but they didn't have enough power to bring to pass the promise that they were waiting on. But Jesus said to the disciples, even though they didn't receive it, if you wait right here, oh, hallelujah, in just a little while, the spirit will fall on you and you will receive the power to do what others could not do. I need you to get my thesis right here. I need you to get it. That the power shows up for you to do what you could not otherwise do. Amen. And since you're living in the dispensation of the New Testament, you have an advantage that the Old Testament folks did not have. I wish I had an amen on that. That, that, that even though they saw the glory of God, even though they, for some of them, they were translated up to heaven. That, there would be uh, Moses and Elijah were translated up to heaven. But while they were down here on earth, they did not have the ability or, 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 or the strength or the power to bring to pass the promise that they were waiting on. So they failed over and over and over again. But you and me and those who live in the, in the, in the, in the, in the blessing of the Holy Spirit, we can receive the power to do what not even the prophets could do. My, my, my. Uh, and having seen them through, uh, so having seen what they went through, we gain the benefit of understanding that there is a process to the promise. Do I have a witness in the house of God today? Amen. There's a process to the promise. See, we, we saw what they went through. Uh, and so now having had the benefit, we can understand that there is a process to the promise. And that process to receiving the promise actually gives us insight into the characteristics of the promise. If you're going to receive something, you ought to know what it looks like. Oh, I don't have no help in the house of God today. If you're going to receive something, you ought to know what it, what it looks like. You, gotta, you ought to know what, what, what to expect when it's coming down the road. You ought to know when not to get frustrated and when not to give up and when not to throw in the towel. When you, are, when you are on your way to the promise, if you know what the promise looks like, if you know the characteristics of the promise, you will not fail. Say, I don't want to fail. Amen. You just say it strong enough. Say, I don't want to fail. Uh -huh. I don't want to fail. And so today I just want to give you some of the characteristics of the promise and then I'm going to sit down if that's all right with you. Uh, the first thing we know about the promise that God has given to his people to receive power is that the promise is gradual. Mm. Amen. The promise is, is gradual. Will you go with me to my text in Acts chapter 4? If you don't have time to look there, it'll be on the screen in a second. Will you go with me to Acts chapter 4? And you'll see in the, in the first few verses, you'll notice that they call out somebody's name, and his name is Peter. Now, this is, this is Peter, y'all. This is Peter. This is Peter. This is Peter. This is Peter. Y'all, I need you. This is Peter who is talking, the man who was a fisherman, not much skill set except to fish, the man who, who was a, 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 sword, a, a sword flamer, a, a, a man who was a short-tempered man, a man who had a potty mouth, amen, a man who, who was prone to give up on God. This is Peter, who is now, the story of Peter is being told in Acts chapter 4, and, 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 and now instead of seeing a namsy pamsy Rudy Poot, what we see is a man who is bold, and brave I want to know what happened to the previous Peter what happened to this man who, who, who when, 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 when he was asked if he belonged to the Lord he denied him three times what happened to the man who was so impetuous that when the soldier showed up he pulled out his sword and cut off his ear what happened to this man who when Jesus told to go preach to the Gentiles he wouldn't do it I wonder what happened to this Peter because the Peter that I see in the gospels is not the Peter that I see in Acts chapter 4 Something has changed. And I want to suggest to you, Siobhan, that the thing that has changed is that Peter is still the same man, but now he's walking in, in power. 
He's walking in power. And so the things that he was unable to do previously, he is now able to do because he's got the power of the Holy Spirit resting on him. And see, some of us, we, we, we get like Peter. We get, we get annoyed with the process to the promise. But I want to let you know, I want to let you know that, that it, it, it was, it's the, the, this Peter had to go through the gradual refining process in order to receive the promise. Peter would not have been prepared to receive the blessing that God had for him if he had not gone through first identifying his weaknesses. If you don't think you need to be filled up, you'll never get what God has for you. Oh, bless the Lord in this place. If you don't think, if you don't think you, you have some, some weak spots, if you don't think you got some holes in your, in your life, then you'll never see the need for God to fill those holes with his presence. I wish I had a witness in here. And so I want to encourage you to, and I want to remind you that the, 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 the process to getting to the promise is gradual. That means that, 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 that God, before he reveals to you the final stage of the journey, he's got to refine you refine you in the process of receiving the, the promise this is why I love fathers amen y'all didn't know I was gonna get Father's Day into this sermon I'm gonna get it in right now uh, this is why I I love fathers and particularly why I love uh, Joseph the father of Jesus because it was Joseph who stood with with his wife when she was pregnant and he didn't do it And some of us believe that after Jesus was born, then everything got peachy keen. And it was all good because the baby was there. But no, for 30 years, Joseph had to endure the scarlet letter that his wife potentially had slept with somebody else. Now, he had gotten the word from God 30 years earlier. I need you to hear me. He had gotten the word from God 30 years earlier, but the manifestation of the promise, amen, took 30 years to come to pass. Jesus didn't start his ministry until he was 30 years old. For, for 30 years, his family was looking at him side eye. For 30 years, the people in his community didn't believe his story. For 30 years, he was the gossip of the town. For 30 years, he had to go through the gradual refining process before he could receive the promise but 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 dads I want to say that that's one of our challenges one of the things I love about watching my son grow hallelujah is that I see that 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 God is 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 growing him and expanding him and blessing him each and every day but the challenge of the father is to be stalwart and steadfast like Joseph was and even though they're getting on your nerves even though they're fussing and fighting even though they're exhibiting some of your characteristics that you wish nobody knew about you got to stay in the fight and watch the gradual process happen of development so that you can receive the promise because every one of our children has a promise on their lives I need you to hear me fathers I need you to hear me that every 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 child even if they're in detention every every day even if they've been suspended a few times even if they've gotten themselves into some trouble in the community every every child has a promise from God on their lives and our responsibility as fathers is to steward that promise is to work with that promise to be patient with that promise to believe in the promise to hold on to the promise and to stay in the fight until we see the promise revealed Ah, and I'm glad I got some fathers here today who said, I'm not giving up. I could have stepped out. I could have gone the another way. I could have uh, worked with somebody else, but I, I'm staying in the fight. And maybe you're saying, you know what? I need, I need a daddy. Well, that's all right. You got Jesus as your father. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Stayed in the fight. So I just want to want to I want you to know that just because the journey is not easy does not mean the journey isn't worth it. And I, can I just say something parenthetically? I had not planned to put this in the sermon, but I'm going to put it in right here. You know, sometimes if 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 there were if there <laughs> we love to bash the man. But if we if we were a little more affirming of the men. Oh, I can't get no witnesses in here. 
That's all right. Maybe I'll get the men to witness with me. Amen. If, if we were, if we are a little bit more a, a celebratory of the journey that our men are on, then maybe they might become what you want them to become. Ah. Uh, yeah, you know, after you've been at work all week and you've been going through some challenges on your job, the last thing you want to do, the Bible says that it is, it is better to stay on the, on the top of the tin roof than to have a nagging wife. That's what the word says. Blame it on Proverbs. Don't blame it on the preacher. I'm just sharing you what the word says. The truth is that, that if we had a little more love that came out of our lips, if we had a little more blessing that came out of our lips, if we had a little more grace that came out of our lips, maybe what we see going on in our homes and in our communities might change as it relates to our men. Amen, amen, and amen. The pastor is preaching whether you want to accept it or not in the name of Jesus. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so you got to you got to just like the fathers, we're encouraging you to, to allow the gradual refining process to happen with your children. Sometimes, ladies, you need to allow the gradual refining process to happen with your man. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Uh, so so not only is, is this promise that we're going after, not only do you need to understand that it is gradual, but you also need to understand that it is graded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, what you need to know, what you need to know is that, is that God doesn't show you the full picture at the beginning. But there are grades you must go through in order to see the final picture. And if you stop at kindergarten, you'll never see the blessing that he had waiting on you in the postdoctoral fellowship. I wish I had a witness in the house that, that it is graded. There are levels to the promise. It happens in stages. It happens in seasons. It happens through experiences. God doesn't give you all of his spirit and all of his power at one time because you wouldn't know what to do with it. I wish I had an amen in the house of God. Uh, uh, when you're just learning how to add, you're not ready for calculus. Amen. When you're just learning how to do calculus, you're not ready for regression analysis. Amen. When you're just learning how to do regression analysis, you're not ready for real numbers. I wish I had a witness in the house of God today that understand that God's God's promise for you goes through levels. It goes through it goes through seasons, and you gotta pass the first test before you can get to the next test. Don't be desiring the next test if you haven't passed the first test. You got to be willing to go through the fire if you want to get the victory i wish i had a witness in the house of god yeah you got to pass the test say neighbor i'm ready to pass the test yeah, 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 yeah. You got to pass the test because there's levels to God's promise. And some of us have plateaued at a level. We're only in the sixth grade when God's trying to get us to the eighth grade. We're only in high school when God wants to move us to college. We're only in college when God's trying to get us to a master's or a PhD level. And I just want somebody in the house of God to say, I'm not going to get stunted in a grade that was not destined for me. I'm going to move up. Up the ladder according to the power of Jesus last thing I want to get to is not only is this promise gradual not only is it graded but the promise of God is grand oh hallelujah I wish I had somebody in here uh, that understands that God doesn't do anything small yeah, yeah, God doesn't do anything haphazardly. God doesn't do anything uh, as a second thought or as a, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a consequence or rather a, 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 sub, a, a subsequent act as a result of your failing. God doesn't do anything as, as just a, a, a little note. God always does things in grandeur. Uh, because he's a big God. He's a, he, he's a magnanimous God. He's a, he's a God that stretches from one end of the earth to the next. In fact, he stretches from one end of the universe uh, 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 to, to the other. And so we have a grand God. And so when you're going after your promise, amen, listen to this. When you're going after the promise of power that he has promised to you, the power that will allow you to do what you otherwise were not able to do, don't get stuck with your idea 
of what God's promise is for you. Because the Bible says, hallelujah, I'm glad I got some text this morning. The Bible says, higher than the heavens, hallelujah. Yeah, higher than the heavens are above the earth. So, it, uh, so are God's thoughts above my thoughts and his ways above my ways. So if I can see it, then maybe it's not what God has for me. I'm glad he has a, a, a grand plan, and I'm glad, hallelujah, as I come to my close, I'm glad that, that that plan, that grand plan was built on grace. Ah, yes, Jesus. I'm glad it was built on grace because grace means that I get what I don't deserve. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve his, his mercy, but I'm so glad that grace allows me to be shaped and molded and cleansed by the love of Jesus. And as we're about to partake of the communion emblems, I, I, I just want to thank God for his grace. Do I have anybody in here who will thank him with me for his grace? Amen. For his grace, for, for his grand grace, the, the grace that that covers me, the grace that saves me, the grace that brought Jesus down through 42 generations, the grace that allowed Jesus, the son of God, to be raised by an earthly mother and father, the grace that allowed Jesus, the son of God, to be taught by human teachers, the grace that allowed Jesus to walk through this earth for 33 and a half years, that grace, I'm talking about that grace, the grace that allowed Jesus to, to be touched with the feeling of my infirmities, oh grace, grand grace, the grace that allowed Jesus to be lied on and spit on and talked about and ridiculed and yet he never said a mumbling word grand grace is what I'm talking about it should have been me that they were talking about it should have been me that they were lying on it should have been me that they were telling untruths about it should have been me that they were spitting on but for the grace of Jesus he gave me what I do not deserve he carried me when I couldn't carry myself he helped me when I could not help myself and then here's what happened we even after Jesus was being lied on and spit on he was carried from from Pilate to the priest and then from the priest to the pinnacle of Calvary and they tell me that he died on Friday hallelujah and he rested on Sabbath but early on Sunday morning he got up with all grace and power in his hand and if that was the end of the story watch this that would be good enough for me but remember the promise graduates uh, and, and on Sunday morning Jesus had not yet received his terminal degree he completed the course requirements but the diploma was not yet in his hand and my Bible tells me that graduation day is still to come but bless God the ceremony program has already been outlined the Bible tells me that the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then those of us who remain will be caught up together to meet him in the air and that will be a grand and gracious graduation and I wonder if I have anybody in the house of God today that says I want to be part of the number I want to be there when the saints go marching in I want to be there when they walk on the streets of gold I want to be there for the great graduation ceremony and I want you to hear this I want you to hear this and then we're going to go into communion. I need you to hear this. Everybody's listening to me. Here's what's beautiful about that great picture. That day when we will get to glory. That day when we will stretch across the sea of glass. Here's what's beautiful. There's a writer who says that Jesus will give us our graduation caps. They are called a crown. Oh, I feel like preaching in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible says that Jesus will give us a graduation cap and it's called a crown. He will put stars in each one of the crowns for the grades that we have passed. Oh, but uh, then there is coming a day when after he has crowned everybody and everybody has a star in their crown, they will do what they do at graduations. They will take off their hats, but instead of throwing it in the air, they will throw it at the feet of Jesus because they, we will say we're unworthy we're unworthy we're unworthy but God you are worthy you kept your promise you kept your, your word you didn't let us down and you gave us grace
we didn't deserve it but you gave it to us and now because you gave us your grace we are walking in power yeah 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 I used to be a gutter I used to be in the gutter most I used to be addicted to drugs I used to be a liar I used to be a cheater I used to be uh, filled with lust I used to be messed up in my head but because of the power that God has left in me now I can do what I was unable to do I can overcome my struggles I can overcome my habits I can overcome my tendencies I can overcome my failings because I've got power I wish is there anybody in the house of God who can say I'm not what I used to be hallelujah because I've got power tap your neighbor and say neighbor if you had seen me back then if you had known what I used to do you wouldn't be sitting up next here to me but thank God he let me have a little bit of his power yeah 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 I got power I don't deserve it but he gave it to me anyway I don't deserve it but he gave it to me anyway stretch your hand and thank God for his power It may take you a little while because the process, the promise, the process to the promise is gradual. It's graded. It has levels. But don't you ever forget that God's power is grand. And it's got great things in store for you.